Like this video, subscribe, leave a comment below. This hopefully will be a very short one. Uh, we are continuing with Creation Week, but this one actually is not necessarily a response to, to Bill Nye. Uh, sort of is, but, but we'll get into that. Uh, in our last chapter, which was chapter 7, Bill Nye was talking about survival of the good enoughs or the hangs in there. and, and Again, not, not the fittest, because again, there are animals that probably could have survived slightly better, but they weren't there. And uh, so, again, no animal is perfect. This, this is actually an important lesson I want, I want you to learn. There is something to be said about the fact that God has built a, a weakness and a strength in every creature, even, even us humans. Uh, you think about it. We humans are probably the smartest creatures. Uh, sometimes I look at certain people and I wonder. Uh, but we are the smartest. Uh, we have the ability to be self-aware. We have the ability to communicate. We have the ability to rationalize and 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 really bring conversation stuff to the next level. Uh, it's not saying that no other creature has the ability to communicate because they some clearly do. Um, but but what we have is as humans we are very intelligent. We are very okay. That's about it. <laughs> you know we have intelligent. We're not as strong as a gorilla. We're not as fast as a cheetah. We can't fly. Uh, we're actually fairly weak physically. You, you, we, we take damage very easily. Uh, but again, it's our intelligence that helps us kind of rationalize our way through things. And so what I want you to understand is that God has built a weakness and a strength in everything. This is going to come into play later on in Bill Nye's book where he talks about, you know, well, how come there's suffering? How come there's weakness? How come there's, how come we're so susceptible to disease and, and all of this stuff? And, and what it is, is if you take the biblical approach, God is going to talk about the idea that he has allowed weakness so that we would rely on him. He has allowed suffering in the world for various reasons. We'll get into it in a future video. Uh, but he, there are a lot of reasons why there is suffering and decay in the world. A big part of it's the fall. You have sin, you have chaos, all that stuff that goes along with it. And so mankind is afflicted by what the Bible would call the curse. Uh, there's disease and bloodshed and death in the world. And, and this idea of, well, why, how, how come God allows it to happen? Well, let me just stop you right there and let me ask you a simple question. If every time you were going to sin, God smacked you upside the head, would you appreciate it? Like every time, let's say, you know, you were going to look at a woman lustfully, you'd be like, well, I don't consider that a sin. It's like, well, the Bible does. And so every time you do that, if God came and went and just smacked you upside the head, would you appreciate it? Or, or every time you covetously glanced at another person, would you like it if God came up? Bah! I mean, there are some people who have done some terrible things and God has given them some leeway to repent. Uh, in fact, there was a, a group of people in the Old Testament that he gave like 400 years to repent and they didn't. And so what God does is there's a lot of times where God will give people a space to repent. But in the process, they do a lot of damage to other people. And it, so it's God's grace to one person that another person will suffer. And people look at it and go, how come you didn't do anything about it, God? And it's like, well, if God had done something about it to you, you wouldn't have liked it for a moment. And you would have thought, how come you can't just leave me alone, God? Think about it. Those of you who believe homosexuality is okay, and you don't believe that God has said or should have said anything about it. The Bible does say that homosexuality is wrong. Okay, we can get into that in another video. But what do we hear a lot of people saying? Oh, God got more important things to do than care about your sex life. He made a big deal about it, so obviously not. But what, what other things then are more important? Well, he should stop people from killing children. Okay. You should stop people from, you know, assaulting children. Okay, but doesn't God have more important things to do? Well, that's terrible. Okay, but terrible is really a matter of perspective. It's a matter of how you look at the world. And so we look at it and God says, stop doing that, but I'm going to give you a space to repent. And we look at God and say, how come you don't do something about it? And then when God looks at the Canaanites who were known for doing stuff like that, and he uses Israel to wipe them off the face of the planet, we go... God, how come you're such an ogre and a grouch and you just mass genocided those people? It's like, so do you want him to deal with the people who assault and kill children or not? 
And where do you stand on abortion? Because abortion is the same thing. Well, abortion's okay. It's a woman's right to choose. Okay, then you're no different than the Canaanites. And so really, you don't think God can do anything or should do anything. So that's a little bit of a rant. But there's a reason why wickedness and sin exists in the world. And it's because God has given mankind some free will and the ability to have some rope to hang himself, potentially. And so what we see even in the natural world is there are diseases and sickness and death. So there's chaos and all that disorder. But what's neat is God has developed in all of these different creatures their ability to adapt to their environment, which helps them survive, but also the ability to defend themselves while not being overpowered. And so you have something like the cheetah, which can chase down most animals, but its prey is also extremely fast. And so the cheetah can't just outrun and kill everything. It really is going to pick off the weaker, sicker animals or the younger animals. And so most of the, the prey is going to escape. And even then, some of these animals have the ability to kick and defend themselves in various ways. And, and, and you, you take a creature like the hippo, which is big and slow, but man, when it gets going, it's terrifying and it, it's going to fight and kill whatever comes around. And so you look at that creature and you're like, well, what's the point of that? And it's, again, it has strengths and weaknesses. And so there are creatures like the turtle that are fairly slow, but they're super well defended. And I think one of the only creatures that's, you know, super overpowered is the mountain lion, because that creature will sneak up on you, jump on you, kill you, drag you off in the woods, and have no problem about it. And uh, so you look at most creatures, most creatures who lack a certain ability will make up for it in some other way. And so I think it's important to remember that as we look at the, the creation, that what God has done is he's not made any creature perfect. In, in what we would understand as perfect. Like, no creature is going to stand a 100% chance of survival. Even we humans. We are fairly weak, and we can get taken down by most things. But we have a brain, and we have intelligence and self-awareness that allows us to kind of survive and thrive, obviously. There's, there's 7 billion of us. And, and you look at even small creatures that can be smushed really quickly. Their strength is that they just mass multiply. So you think about a spider and how spiders are everywhere, but we can kill them like, like that. Whereas something large like an elephant, there might be one born, you know, every year. And it's, it's like, whoa, you know, but, but you can't kill an elephant that easily. You know, you're not like to an elephant, but could you imagine if spiders who can be, imagine they reproduce once a year, it'd be kind of rough. They'd go extinct really quick. And so, so what God has done to answer some of Bill Nye's problems with, you know, like, oh, the giraffe and nothing's nothing's perfect. And why are there problems? There are, there's evil in the world because mankind has sinned and God pronounced a curse. There's evil in the world because God has given mankind some room to repent. And so he's being patient with us. And that, that should be an encouragement to you to repent. But you also have to understand that God did not set out to make every creature perfect. It's perfect for what it is, but no creature is going to be perfectly capable of surviving. Uh, I, I like the way I believe it was Robbie Zacharias put it. He says, some of those very things that make us the weakest make us the most endearing. Use the illustration of a small child and how all the things about a small child that make it weak and frail and pathetic are actually the most endearing parts of it. It's the weakness. It's the big eyes and the wobbliness and the tumbling around. Uh, it was a big deal today. My son, my, my youngest, was standing up in his crib for the first time. And so he managed to pull himself upright. And, and it's extremely weak and pathetic. And he topples over all the time and can, you know, hurt himself if, he, if we're not being really careful with him. But that very weakness is what is so endearing about him. And so I wouldn't want him to be made of steel and never able to get hurt because then he just wouldn't be as cute and he wouldn't be as endearing. And so there are certain things about small, weak, pathetic creatures that they're just endearing. And some of that may very well be a, an advantage to them to be small and weak and endearing because it makes those of us who actually have a heart, unlike the abortion doctors, it makes us love them and care about them. And so that's just something I want you to think about as we continue with creation week and evolution and some of the things here, because God is extremely merciful and in his mercy, he has designed us to survive well, but he's also calling us to repentance. 
So I'd ask you guys to think about that. And, and if you have never believed the gospel or accepted the gospel, look into the life of Christ. Look into the claims and teachings of him. Uh, because, again, that is the gospel. And that's covered in a previous video. And so, guys, this has been a continuation of Creation Week. Uh, please like this video, share it, uh, comment below. And uh, if, if you have anything you want me to cover more deeply on this issue, please let me know. I do have a whole video planned out for uh, the doctrine of suffering. Uh, but this is just kind of a teaser uh, of that material.